believe in living life to the full. So picture the scene. You're lying on your deathbed, watching your toes curl up, and you're thinking, what have I done with my life? Now, at this crucial point in time, you don't really want to be thinking about all the things that you wish you had done or could have done or should have done. So when you press the action replay button on your lives, will it only contain images such as these? <laughs> Notice it's the women doing all the work. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Or <laughs> when you look back on your life, will it contain something a bit more exciting and interesting, stretchy and challenging, adventurous and transforming and soul-fulfilling such as these? This is all the bucket list of things that I've done so far. And it's called a bucket list because it's about all the things that you want to do or places you want to go to before you kick the bucket. Um, I've done 110 things so far, and I'm not dead yet, so I've uh, got a few more to do before I die. And on this list, there's massive things like sailing around the world and skiing to the South Pole. But there's also nicer, more enjoyable, more relaxing, more sort of everyday bucket list things, such as, for instance, uh, scuba diving on the Great Barrier Reef. Snogging a dolphin. <laughs> Swimming with dolphins, obviously. Um, and, and getting to meet the real Father Christmas in Lapland, which was uh, one of my favourites. And uh, this is a list of the current, current list of all the things that I want to do. And there's some uh, big stuff there, and there's some small stuff, and there's some illegal stuff. Uh, but it's stuff that I want to do. <laughs> I think two of them go together. One is getting arrested, and one is streaking at a rugby game. So I might <laughs> could do those two in one day. So um, <laughs> this list is constantly expanding and moving and changing. And as I talk to people and have a cracking conversation about you know, what's on your list, what have you done that's amazing, what shall I do next, where have you been that's really cool, I just pop it onto my phone initially to capture it, and then I transfer it onto my website. Because the fact it's actually written down or captured somewhere means I'm much more likely to do it. So there's a sort of commitment, if you like, between me and my list that I will do these things. And every now and again, I'll look at my list and I think, OK, which one should I do next? And depending on my circumstances, my money, my time at the time, uh, I just pick one to do and gradually get them done. So why? Why do I do this? Why do we have bucket lists? And why do sometimes I push myself really hard to do such extraordinary and challenging things like skiing to the South Pole or sailing around the world? Well, um, who's heard of being in your comfort zone? Yeah, a lot of you. Hopefully you're sort of in your comfort zone now. So, panic zone, anyone? Heard of that one too? Yeah, thank you. Thanks for responding. <laughs> so if we imagine um, we're in the comfort zone... My writing is rubbish, sorry. And if you are in that zone, you'll be perhaps um, answering emails, watching TV, uh, loading the dishwasher, doing the ironing. For most people, that's in their comfort zone anyway. <laughs> I don't like ironing myself. Um, what sort of feelings and experiencing, uh, experiences are you having or emotions are going through you when you're in your comfort zone? Answering emails, watching TV, doing the ironing. Okay, so do feel free to shout out, but if not, I'll write some things down. Um, possibly a bit bored. Anyone else? Might be quite pleasant in a relaxing way. Quite relaxed. Bit of complacency, maybe stuck in a rut. Lethargic. Lethargic, thank you very much. And what's going on in here? Nothing. nothing, or distracting yourself with other more exciting and more exotic thoughts. So nothing in the head much, maybe. And your body is probably quite flat or relaxed or unenergized. So I'll put unenergized for that. Unenergized. <laughs> so that's sort of comfort zone, sort of feelings and emotions that are going on. But then if you go to the other extreme end of the scale and go into your proper, proper panic zone, I don't mean just a rush of adrenaline, I mean like really nasty panic. So for some people that might be um, jumping out of a plane if you're scared of heights, or doing a speech in front of a thousand people, or um, Imagine uh, a loved one was due home at 11 p.m. and it's now 7 a.m. and they haven't been in touch. So, proper nasty, don't like this place, panic zone. What sorts of feelings and emotions are going on now? 
Anxiety, thank you. Fear. All that sort of nervous and worry. It's not a nice place to be. Physically. Tense. Can't eat. Can't sleep. Shaking. Sick, maybe. And up here. Yeah, so I think it, it can either be nothing or it can be too much and you're flitting all over the place. So it's so about control, really. So in the head, it's either nothing or, or just flitting all over the place and not really focusing or concentrating. So that's not a nice place to be. But what I want to talk about more is the place in between these two, which I call the stretch zone. So you're not fully... Oops. <laughs> Cut that out of the video. <laughs> <laughs> you're not fully, fully relaxed and uh, lethargic and think of nothing, but you're not fully sick with that fear. You're in between, and you might be a bit that way or you might be a bit that way, but imagine now whatever that stretch might be for you. So it might be jumping out of the plane still for some of you. It might be doing a talk in front of 100 people, um, but, you know, it's a bit of a buzz going on. So what sort of feelings and experiences are going on in your stretch zone? Excitement, Excitement thank you. Adrenaline and a buzz, whatever you want to call that. Possibly a bit of worry, fear still going on, but less sick-making and more exciting worry, fear. So I'm going to, I must admit, there might be a bit of worry. And in here, sense of achievement definitely afterwards and pride, hopefully. And really focused. Your mind is really much sharper and mentally alert and focused than in either of these two places. Physically, just sort of on it, on the edge. On it. it. Should we put on it? (laughs) (laughs) So, So for me, it's about doing a bit more of this because that's the exciting place to be. That's where you're really excited, motivated, um, inspired, um, have that real sense of thrill and achievement and buzz and a bit of adrenaline, and that's where you learn and grow and develop and take on board new experiences and new learnings and, and new stretch. So that's why it's the stretchy bit. This is fine and relaxing and comfortable, and this you don't really want to go into too much. So, so for me, living life to the full is about packing your life um, with amazing experiences, but also putting yourself into the stretch zone a bit more uh, than perhaps you would normal otherwise. So if we take one of my experiences, um, the global challenge around the world yacht race, um, that was definitely a stretch for me, a bit of panic now and again, I must admit. <laughs> um, who has been sailing? Uh, quite a few of you. Okay, so picture a lovely, lovely sunny day, blue sky, nice wind filling your sails, You've got shorts and T-shirts on, gin and tonic in your hand. Well, what I did was nothing like that, so let's have a look. <laughs> so, yes, that was my sort of sailing. Um, so why, why would I put myself through that? Um, It was tough, and there was lots and lots of reasons why not to do that, for sure. And some of the main ones are these. I had a full-time job, which I actually did quite enjoy at the time. I was a shareholder, and I'd have to sell my shares. Um, I thought it would damage my long-term career by going away for a year. I owned a flat in London. It cost £30,000 to do this, plus the whole year's salary that you're missing out on earning, of course. Um, I could do so much more with £30,000. I need to save money for pension, mortgage. I can't go away for a year. I can't sail. I'll be sick. <laughs> um, not sure I enjoy it, and my mum will kill me. So lots of reasons <laughs> and others um, that uh, I perhaps shouldn't do it. Um, but you could call these excuses, because for every one of these, there's a counter uh, to them. And generally, you know, go for it, basically. But, but essentially, you know, I did quit my job. There are more jobs. I sold my shares, that's fine. It improved my long-term career because I came back more confident and more interesting as a person, I guess. I rented my flat out, of course. I earn more now than I did before. 
It was money well spent because life's a living, right? Um, I can go away for a year. I learned to sail. Yes, I was sick, so what? <laughs> Didn't kill me. Um, it was scary, actually, but it was an amazing, amazing year for me, and um, I'm still alive. <laughs> she had words. <laughs> so um, just talk about the South Pole expedition briefly, because that was a huge stretch for me, a huge stretch. Um, it was, as Steph mentioned, um, uh, an expedition from the coast of Antarctica to the South Pole, which is about 1,000 kilometres. It was 46 days. It was uphill most of the way. It was into the wind, pulling a polk of 80 kilos. Didn't quite get on with my tent mate, but that's a whole other story. Uh, it was quite cold. Um, minus 19 down to minus 40, plus wind chill, and all that. So, you know, it was pretty tough, as you can imagine. And I, I, was, I was definitely, definitely stretching myself big time taking this on. I didn't even know an ordinary person could do these things. I thought you had to have sort of be old and beardy, but... Um, and then, um, if that wasn't hard enough, I think um, what made it even harder was I got a medical condition called polar thigh on uh, day seven. Day seven of 46 days, so not ideal. And um, I honestly think that uh, physically and psychologically, it made it probably about three times harder as a whole trip. Now, at this point in the talk of a polar expedition, you can get some pretty gruesome photos coming up. So uh, for the next two slides, look away now if you don't want to see anything yucky and gruesome. Because I'm going to show you my thighs, <laughs> which aren't very pretty in the next two slides. Mm. <laughs> so it's a cold injury. It attacks the flesh around your thighs. You start off with, like, chill blains, fine, but then they harden up, and then you get blisters, and then they basically disintegrate into ulcerated flesh, which then dies, and you get necrotic tissue uh, and gangrene and MRSA when I got back to the UK. So, not nice. Uh, anyone look away? I don't think anyone did. You all just went, show me. Um, <laughs> bring it on. I want to see her thighs. Oh, lovely. Um, but two, two things kept me going, and they were my skis, uh, obviously literally, but also the things that I'd printed on them before I left home, because I love these two phrases. And one of them was, choose your attitude. Okay? And I believe you can take this throughout life. No matter what happens to you in life, you can choose your response to it. So at this point in time, when we're talking about medical evacuation and pain and you know, how can you ski 12 hours a day with, with really painful thighs, I could have chosen to quit. I could have chosen to ask for the plane to come and pick me up and that comfort of a cup of tea and a real toilet and all that sort of stuff, that would have been so nice. Um, or I could have chosen to cry, get depressed, get upset, get angry, get frustrated, whinge and all that. But actually what I chose to do is to embrace the situation, do something about it, manage my legs, manage the pain, and manage my brain. Because with some of these physical injuries we get when we're doing challenges, even a blister, we spend so much time and effort and trouble on the physical problem and the plasters and the pills and the bandages and the lotions and the potions that um, you spend less time on just working out what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and what you can do about it. So choose your attitude, or my new phrase that I made up for this, <laughs> manage the pain, manage your brain, um, but somehow you can choose how you respond to these um, difficulties and challenges that you get generally in life. The other phrase on the other ski is kind of linked to that, and is um, pain is temporary, pride is forever. Pain is temporary, pride is forever. So the pain of experiencing that in my legs eventually goes. In fact, it's only just cleared up, um, as Steph will testify. Um, but the pride of getting to the South Pole, of achieving this huge challenge, and actually touching that mirror ball when you get there um, will stay with me forever. So if you do something challenging and hard in life, remember, choose your attitude, and pain is temporary, pride is forever. My other big one I've already touched upon is sailing around the world. This was the global challenge around the World Yacht Race, for those of you who might have heard that. Uh, this is us on start day. Um, and this is the Southern Ocean, which is extremely cold again. And if you think this is the size of a typical person down there, this is the size of a typical wave. So 22 metres, um, very dangerous. We had a medical evacuation. This is flashy. Not his real name, of course. Um, high on morphine, as you can see from the <laughs> smiley photos. But he was in a bit of pain because he'd smashed his arm up. Um, he got picked up by a wave and thrown into the rigging. So um, we had to drop him off, which involved a 3,000-mile detour. 
Um, by this time, we were four crew down, um, three weeks behind the rest of the fleet, out of communication, in the bitter, freezing, horrible Southern Ocean on Christmas Day, and the race organisers were asking us to retire. Uh, but choose your attitude, right? Uh, we raced on, and it wasn't all that bad. Amazing sunrises and sunsets. Um, those are the two big ones. Uh, I'm glad I've done them. They were huge challenges, huge memories and experiences for me. But I've also done the smaller stuff. Um, this is on top of a sand dune in the Gobi Desert in the Trans-Siberian Railway, jumping out of a plane, of course. Um, one of my favourites, paddling the Mekon um, in a dugout canoe, and then paddling the Thames. This is what that looks like at the source. So I paddled the source of the sea, and that is the Thames, believe it or not. It's beautiful all along the way. And then the mad things, uh, some of you might know this one, Tomatina, the Tomato Throwing Festival. <laughs> World Bog Snorkeling Championships in Wales. <laughs> and uh, this is on tomorrow, the London to Brighton Bike Ride. I've done it a few times in different fancy dress outfits. Um, and in doing all these things, I've got a few tips I'd like to share with you before I finish, because my secret mission is to get you all to do a bucket list and have a, a list of things to do before you die. So, 10 tips for living life to the full. First of all, um, do take some time out to um, think about all the things you have done, because I'm sure you've done more than you realise, and be proud of those. Then, brainstorm all the things that you want to do and the places you want to go to. It doesn't have to be skiing to the South Pole. It can be making a cake if you've always wanted to make a cake and you never have. So it's your list. Um, it's up to you what you want on it. And try and write them down somewhere, because you're 10 times more likely to do it if it's written down. So on a bucket, on your leg, on the wall, on your website, something. Every now and again, review the list and choose one to do. And then um, take a big positive step towards making it happen. So enter the competition, sign the contract, buy the horse, whatever it involves. Um, but that will get you started. And then stay positive. Uh, no excuses, no reasons, no buts. Because then you might be limiting yourself um, with negative labels. If you think you can't, you might not. If you think you can, you will. So that's about limiting yourself. So you can. I couldn't ski, I couldn't sail, but I did, and you can learn. Choose your attitude. You know that one. Give it 100% commitment. Some of the bigger ones will need a lot of commitment, a lot of courage with your whole heart, mind, body, and soul. So you step up to the challenge. Do it, whatever that thing is. And then um, you can update your lists and brag about it and drink lots of champagne for quite a while. And in doing all this, for me, it's about living life to the full, Pack it with experiences and adventures and meeting people and going to amazing places and achieving more than perhaps uh, you'd achieve if you didn't have a bucket list of things to do. I wouldn't have gone to South Pole if I didn't have a bucket list. Uh, and then it will be about living life to the full so that when you're lying on your deathbed, it will be with a smiley face. <laughs> Thank you.